below ground in point five of the LHC, one of the four interaction points of the LHC machine. This is the CMS detector in its final configuration, closed around the collision point, ready to take beam. It's actually going to go for cosmic ray today, and today the CMS collaboration is going to switch on the big magnet. Together with me, Austin Ball, the technical coordinator of this experiment. Hi, Austin. Hi, Paul. So why do you need to run with cosmic rays just a couple of months ahead of the real beam from the LHC? Well, as you mentioned, uh, we've closed the detector up, but after an awful lot of work that we did uh, since the autumn of last year, we broke the detector down into its 13 major pieces, and we installed some new equipment, in fact, uh, two or three new detector elements, which will improve the performance. And we also did some maintenance, uh, fixed some things that we discovered which were wrong at the end of last year. So now, having put the detector back together, we need to make sure that all the pieces of it still work, all the connections are good, this sort of thing. And uh, we need to do that, of course, in the final configuration just before the beam comes. So having done that, we also want to check that the pieces are in the positions that we expected them to be in. And we're using the cosmic ray tracks not just to check that the detectors work, but also actually to line them up with respect to one another. And we need to do that both without the magnet running and with the magnet running. We've, in the last few, few weeks, we've accumulated about 300 million cosmic ray tracks in the detector. And now we just have a few more steps to take and we'll be ready for the LHC beams. Okay, so now you're gonna switch on the magnet very soon. The magnet of CMS is the solenoid. It's one of the fundamental components of uh, this detector. It's actually mentioned in the acronym CMS, means compact mule solenoid. Why is the magnet so important and what's special about it? Right, so the, the CMS solenoid is the, is the core of the experiment. Everything is basically designed around this magnet. It is the biggest solenoid in the world. It's about uh, six meters across and 13 meters long. And uh, the, the magnetic field uh, is about 3.8 Tesla. That's about 100,000 times the magnetic field of the Earth, just to set the scale. Uh, we generate that field. It's a superconducting magnet operating at 4.5 degrees absolute uh, with a two-phase helium cooling. And uh, when we put 19,000 amps through that, we generate this enormous field. Uh, there's the amount of stored energy in the magnet is actually two gigajoules, which to convert to some understandable quantity is about the same as the, the kinetic energy of, a, of a, the energy of motion of an Airbus A380 flying along at cruising altitude. So a lot of stored energy in this magnet. We need the magnet, of course, to analyze the momentum of charged particles. So charged particles bend more if, if they have low momentum and less if they have high momentum in the magnetic field. And this we're going to use to analyze the collision products from the LHC collisions. But for the moment, the cosmic rays are good uh, for, as I said, checking that all the different components still work and also particularly for lining them all up with respect to each other. We've, we've opened pieces up, we've moved them around, now we've put it all back together. We've got to make sure we understand where the pieces are with respect to each other. And this is going to happen very shortly. Very shortly. So we better go. We're going to turn the magnetic field on. We're going to have to go, I'm afraid, uh, because uh, the camera for sure will stop working uh, when, the, when the field comes on. Here in the control room of uh, CMS, uh, in front of the control screens uh, for the magnet, which uh, just has been switched on, uh, it is now a 3.8 Tesla, which is approximately uh, 20,000 amps um, current in the magnet. Switching on such a magnet is uh, not like uh, you switch on your microwave at home, but uh, it, in, uh, it is a procedure which has uh, lots of controls uh, and uh, has to be monitored very carefully. Uh, and it takes, uh, if we are going if everything goes perfectly uh, in about three and a half to four hours. Um, so you run very slowly the current from zero to approximately 20,000 amps. And um, uh, here we can, can monitor the cryo system must of course work because it's a, um, a superconducting magnet. We have uh, the power supplies with all the safety systems have to, be, have to work all the time, have to be monitored and uh, therefore it is uh, a long uh, procedure which takes uh, these several hours. The 
Magnet is also performing very well since um, yesterday afternoon, so we are happy. And uh, I believe we will be keeping the data taking till Friday. Maybe we can left for some special exercises. Definitely, I mean, we achieved already, so I think we achieved already the main goal, which was collecting cosmics for the tracker, and then we are doing a special test with a, with a different uh, trigger type. So we need a few, few more days of data. But I believe by Friday we will get this, if everything goes fine, let's say with the same efficiency. And then maybe we will run over the weekend some other tests, trigger tests, high rate tests, things like that. And in the CMS control room, we find a pointed spokesperson, Guido Tonelli. Hi, Guido. Hi. So this cosmic run, was it useful for your detector? Yeah, to be really frank, it is an excellent data set that will allow us to understand subtle detector features, including calibration, including alignment, including synchronization of major detector elements, which is of paramount importance to be able to take good data as soon as the collisions will start. This dress rehearsal was very useful for you. How, are you now ready for the real beam from the LHC? If it were tomorrow, would you be ready? Yeah, basically, yes. The status of CMS is excellent. We have more than 99% of channels operational and in a good shape. And we have pre-calibrated and pre-synchronized and pre-aligned the detector at a level that would be possible, ideally, only after a few months of LHC. So really, if together <laughs> we would have collisions, we'd be able to start. What would be the best result you would expect as soon as the collisions function and your detector is perfectly aligned with them? We hope to be able to have enough statistics and the performance of LHC will be such to be able to give us enough data to look for unexpected physics as soon as early as next year.